I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through, three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. But yeah, I've been working on uh, a jank deck, a jank Super Friends deck. Jank is the best. Also, what is... Well, I don't know what super friend, a super friend, you can't just say in magic, you know, form of bucket. Like, I don't know, I don't uh, understand what that is. Well, I think it usually refers to the Gatewatch guys. I got but, you. Um, I'm using it to refer to planeswalkers in general. Gotcha. Oh, man, I am out of it. I just typed <laughs> super friends man. <laughs> yeah. um i think uh super friends deck basically yeah it's just a bunch of planeswalkers basically okay so my um my planes it's basically a planeswalker deck with nico bolas is the main mechanic is the main like thrust okay. of it and the idea is i just have a bunch of planeswalkers a bunch of prolifer- proliferate and then I just see what happens. <laughs> How many planeswalkers are we talking total? Let me see. Oh, I no. don't remember. <laughs> that's I'll no, take a second. That's no good. <laughs> um, a lot. A lo- oh is the man. Answer. I want to see. I want to start seeing people with just a dumb number of planeswalkers for no reason. I'm pretty sure I'm that person. Oh, that's good. Let's see. How I'm many colors my... are we talking? Three, it's Grixis, so it's a uh, uh, red, black, blue. Okay. Um, let's see. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's a respectable S- amount of planeswalkers. <laughs> yeah, I have six planeswalkers, and uh, yeah, uh, I also well, I I do have a Nicol Bolas the Rabbit. Uh-oh. So it's like a quasi oh, man. Walker, but... Internet connection dropped. So. What do we have here? Oh, and we're back. What? Oh. God damn it. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, so... It doesn't always fire, but when it fires, it really makes people angry. So. Nice. Although, I, I... There's so many deck archetypes in the standard that I hate. It's so that screenshot I sent you yesterday is yes is uh not abnormal for my deck. <sighs> that that's a semi frequent uh occurrence of just things get big and are hex proof and have flying. I hate you. <laughs> it doesn't always happen, but but I've got most of the cards are low dropping, mm-hmm. so I can just fire stuff out, and just about every turn something gets bigger. It's it's pretty decent. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm so out of all. I, I've been using too many of my uh, my wild cards. Have you? Oh man. Yeah. Well, I mean, like uh, you, they they give they give them out freely, so it's not crazy to use them, you know. And, and if you're making fun jank, that's better than just hoarding them. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Oh man. So this has been, as I always say, the uh, a continuation oh. of our Magic the Gathering fan cast. Yes, okay, so we went to the city yes. on the weekend, and you and I, had we were on the train, and we spoke for probably an hour straight about Magic the Gathering, and then mm-hmm. as soon as the train pulls into Grand Central, what I forget what question, you asked me a question, but it was <sighs> a complete non sequitur, like it was an hour straight of Magic yeah. the Gathering, and then it's just, so have you seen, like, the new Cheaton video? And I was like, what? Yeah, it's, <laughs> but that's pretty much what I do. I just, <laughs> it's... well, because the problem is I have, uh, I have a, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, separate conversations. Yeah. Like, I have the real conversation, and then under the hood, I've got a, a fake oh, conversation. I do the exact same thing. 
And then what happens is sometimes the wires will get crossed and the fake <laughs> conversation comes into play. Yeah. <laughs> because what what happened was like 20 minutes earlier, someone said something and that, that spawned a separate conversation in my head. <laughs> it did. It was perfect because it was just straight Magic the Gathering and then a non sequitur. And then I just started laughing, and then that woke up the other people. Whoops. That woke up the other people. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> and then I slipped right back into Match the Gathering. Yeah. It was fantastic. So, yeah, it's it's a thing. Yeah. Uh, I I wish I could remember what it was about, but that's that's the problem with separate conversations. Is That was a different John. That was, yeah. It's, it's like two realities merging into one. Yeah. Oh, that happens. <laughs> yep. It especially happens with me. Yeah. So. Uh, I do the same thing a bit. Although I try... I'll do it and then I'll get a weird look half the time. And I'll be like... I'll have to explain how it's not a weird jump. I'll be like, no, it's not weird. Because you said this ten minutes ago. And this is me picking back up on that lead. Because someone will say something. Continue the conversation... I make the face and nod like I'm still paying attention, but in my head I'm like, "Don't forget, you have to pick. Don't forget, this was interesting to you at the time. Don't forget, you got to pick it up later. You got to pick it up later. You got to pick it up later." And then later happens. I have no idea what they've said for the last ten minutes, but then I'm on the topic that I found interesting. So Terramander's pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I guess that's probably how Cryptopedia started. Like, there's. We just can't have normal conversations. <laughs> no, that's explicitly how Cryptopedia yeah. started. Well, that and I forget. Uh, something triggered me to think, oh, it'd be funny if the original idea for Cryptopedia was different than what it ended up being. Oh, yeah. Because the idea was uh, we do the prep work and then hand the copy to the other person and say, have at it. <laughs> Um, but that, that failed to, to get wings because, um, that sounds awful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that'd be the worst. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, so I shared this with you. I don't, I haven't told anyone else about my new Bigfoot theory. And that is mm -hmm. Bigfoot. So everyone, it's hard to get a picture of him. He's always blurry in photo oh, and video. God, this theory. And. I submit that the reason, the cause of that is that Bigfoot emits EMI radiation causing any electronics in the area to not capture a clear signal of anything when it's pointed directly at him. Thus, everything is blurry. And I think that makes perfect sense. And if you think about it, he's covered in fur, so maybe it's something about all his different furs rubbing together cause this. But why, then, in that case, why, why don't gorillas cause it? Why don't, uh, why doesn't Henry Zabrowski cause it? Okay, so perhaps way back when, when, when the branches were diverging, there's a small group of Bigfoot that were mm -hmm. separated and thus they evolved con absolutely separately from the rest of that animal population. And these characteristics in some way helped them. And now way down the road in the future, they made their way out of that separated area and now in the world, um, us interacting with them can't properly perceive the Bigfoot. You've described ev natural selection, evolution by natural selection, but you've applied it in the worst, most insane way. Thus, the best way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I I'm reminded of uh, of Billy Madison, the scene where no, in no point in that rambling. Uh, conversation did you ever even come close to hitting the topic <laughs> uh yeah yeah i don't remember the full quote but it it applies <laughs> yes it does did you also see a penguin because that's a problem uh, i just saw a picture of a penguin and it was uh something like the penguin has uh ate all the fish and has become very fat and does not communicate anymore and i thought ah my spirit animal <laughs> <sighs> uh, yeah 
so uh, I, I guess welcome to Cryptopedia, an explanation to the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week we'll take you onto a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, and paranormal, and th that thing, def the words, definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. Uh, I'm John. And uh, this is the only podcast we'll talk about in the next episode where we could have a full day city adventure and... Just dive into Magic the Gathering. Mm -hmm. I have to point out, if you're not on Magic the Gathering Arena, get on it. That's our jam. It's very good. And it is pretty fun. Yeah. It's zero... Okay, for people who got out of Magic, this is zero investment. Um, th That's it. Just zero investment. You get card packs. You can pay money if you want. You don't have to. Uh, we are not being paid. And uh, basically, if you just like win a few games, they gave you like... 500 you can get like a thousand gold just casually playing a day and that's enough to buy like a pack and open it and, and it, it's great it's great it's, it's just nothing good about or bad about it although i will i will accept hasbro sponsorships we will i'm pretty sure they're trying to distance themselves from us at this point <sighs> that makes me sad yeah yeah i estimate that this creature began, uh, it's the account sort of began around the, the 1500s. It's a, a little ambiguous. Mm -hmm. It roams the Philippines. It is humanoid in appearance and is still seen today. Also, it's not Bigfoot. Is it the Aswang? It is the Aswang. And you want to know something? Hmm? On Thursday, I went through our shared list of creatures yep. uh, to, to start crossing out things we already did. And that's when I discovered this is on your list. And yep. uh, I wrote an apology in there next to it because I was like, ah, Thursday is a little bit late for me to to to, to scrap it. <laughs> I honestly didn't care. Okay, good. Um, this is the second time I have looked at the list after writing a full copy. <laughs> I I almost never look at the list. <laughs> um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Well, the Kate C. Oh, yep. Oh, shit. My bad. 425.19. For real, didn't know. It was seriously low on data. Yeah. 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 So, like, it, it was really hard anyway. I thought, ooh, I heard of this one before. So, it might be easy. It wasn't. So, I don't feel too bad. Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm not. There's a reason why I hadn't gotten to it yet. Okay. <laughs> I luckily found a site that saved me. It's the primary source. Uh, for most of this podcast, I did just drop it into um, the folder. Uh, it's called Chunt's Father, and uh, it's pretty good. The website, by the way, aswangproject.org, uh, surprisingly had a lot on it. Hmm. Yeah, so I thought, oh, they saved me because I was having a hard time, and I got lucky at work today. I was having, I, I was very concerned about my next episode, but I think I found some resources that could provide me a couple couple solids out of it which is nice that way i'm not panicking throughout the week i'm just gonna meditate and let the universe tell me what i do next <laughs> oh, you're playing with fire you are playing with fire i tried that and then i it was like oh man i'm gonna have to do something weird um i finished next week's episode today holy shit i am gel okay so i've done that before on the skinwalkers where I, like I, I i was done early it is a gut like there is so little oh. just, I have so much time to do so much it's like it's like you just found out you have an extra day off work you didn't know about. <laughs> it's so uh, nice. I think you misunderstand. I mean next week's episode for recording. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Yes. Oh. So that's that's uh today. That's today. Yes. You finished today's episode today. <laughs> the, the one we're gonna be recording today, yes. Yeah. yes, yes I did. <laughs> nice. Uh, so Aswang is the general term, almost like, uh, generic trademarks, i.e. Band-Aid mm -hmm. or Kleenex or Nintendo, if you're everyone's grandmother, um, that describes a humanoid shape-shifting creature. So Nintendos are actually Aswangs is what you're telling me? Yes, Nintendo is Aswang. Okay, good. Not, good. And not so, Aswang, and I will say the original title was S Space Wang, because I'm a child. Yeah, well, I mean... I'm also now thinking of Number Wang. Number Wang. Number Wang gets really weird. Yeah. Late in later seasons. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Um, 
so typically they're similar to vampires, ghouls, and uh, like classic witches and succubi. Nice. Uh, the, nice. Nice. Um, given the breadth and the age of this topic, it's hard to nail down a single general description. But um, during the day, the Aswang appear to be your average Joe. And uh, maybe it's just a guy that looks a little odd, uh, like my neighbor, who walks his dog and juggles bowling pins at the same time, or the quiet, shy introvert, like me. However, uh, when night falls, they transform into various things. Uh, Things such as cows, dogs, crows, giant bats, cats, etc. And they they dine upon humans in the night, specifically females, and um, in some uh, lesser reputable... Rep, uh, it's the easy words that get you. It, I don't know why. Uh, in some lesser reputable articles, they steal penises. So basically, you're just describing a, an average night for me. <laughs> yeah. Don't feed John after midnight. No, it's usually a bad, bad, bad idea. It's a, it's, it's a very my, bad idea. My um, gastrointestinal system is a wasteland it is and don't give it any more fuel than it already has it's your gastrointestinal system is a wasteland and on the way back from the city you farted on the train other people in the group woke up and looked at me (laughs) and that's why i pointed at you (laughs) do you want to know a fact what's that fact I thought I pooped myself. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's pretty good. I thought I had, I had had my one. You know, the one and then everything's over? Yeah. Um, luckily, I didn't. But it was close. I am going to share a secret. Yes. Um, so that count... That that uh days days since uh uh last injury uh mm-hmm. poop counter is uh, yeah. was reset two weeks ago. <laughs> oh no 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 no! <laughs> Luckily, I was already in the shower, and I thought, oh, there's a hot fart. I'll uh let us sneak it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it was <laughs> it wasn't uh, <laughs> this is a very listenable episode yeah so far. this is gonna be we're we had a like we had a long run we had the of, most uh, uh, exercise we've ever had in a very long time and mm-hmm. we're rec- <laughs> recording at a it's an evening recording mm-hmm. <laughs> rather than the morning so as as you say, things are gonna get weird. Yeah, I, I'm I'm a, I'm thinking that next week is probably gonna be one of the weirdest. <laughs> I can believe it. Uh, writer for the Aswang Project, a collection of individuals dedicated to the education of Philippine folklore, Jordan Clark writes on a version of the Aswang that I found to be extremely prominent within the writings and media on the Aswang. Through Jordan, I discovered that these ideas, uh, which I will get into, were already extant, but were popularized in 1991 in a paper written by Hermania Mendez, um, who is a folklorist out of California, in a paper titled The Viscera Sucker and the Politics of Gender. Uh I will be using Jordan's article titled uh, Babylon to Aswang, a Collective Dis- Deception uh, as a primary source for uh, at least this portion. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. I thought I had a burp. I didn't. Oh, but you I did. did. <laughs> uh, in this article, Jordan points out that um, the version of the Aswang that I was already familiar with uh, was... About the female viscera sucking, uh, self segmenting witch classification of Aswang. Uh, yet her theory has been irresponsibly applied across the entire ambiguous spectrum of the Aswang by other agendas. Uh, so the picture next to that's interesting. Um, 
let's just say that there's two individuals who have very long tongues, which would be very popular with anyone. <laughs> oh, deeper. Oh, no. <laughs> a it's a good thing that that man's dead. That almost I, I no usually, one else will get. <laughs> yeah, I usually don't like to say that, but man, that dude was an actual nightmare creature. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I picture the uh, the creature and the uh, from Valve, the Valve logo creature. That's sort of how I picture, it, but with a fedora. And I feel like that's uh, that's probably accurate. Um, uh, and that should've... picture, by the way, is what I thought the whole of uh, Aswang was when I started. So that's what I was most familiar with, and we'll get okay. into those uh, okay. specific subcategories. Um, the two. Uh, subcategories, which I'd apparently mistaken for the Aswang, are actually two subcategories known as uh, the Manangol and the Preta. The Preta being in the picture above, and the okay. latter being a set subcategory itself of the Rakshasa, specifically in Hindu concept, uh, a form of demon. Um, as far as the gender aspect of these creatures, I learned that these are regionalisms, and uh, I will go over these first. Um, as they, they were not the ones I was most familiar with, uh, and assumed that any listeners who have heard of the Aswang may be more familiar with these as well. I uh, should also note that the Rakshasa, Rakasa, Rakusa, yeah, I don't know, I can't pronounce anything. Rakshasa. They are um, Rakshasha. Rakshasha. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm bad at pronunciation. Um, they are also... Uh, a type of evil out outsider that is now native to the material plane. They are present. They are presented as powerful magic users that, although they disdain physical fighting as a noble, can be dangerous in close combat against player characters. Um. So what? What? Uh, what game is that from? Um, offices and bosses. It's from offices and bosses. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Not. Dungeons and Dragons. Absolutely not Dungeons and Dragons. We would never talk about that game ever. Nor potentially game. base a future character uh, upon <laughs> like reality is bleeding into itself. There will definitely never be a Chloricon cleric ever in the future. <clears throat> and I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, so in the order that Jordan lists them, there is the <laughs> You just posted a picture of a tiger smoking an opium pipe. <laughs> yep. I'm not sure why. Oh, I, that's I know why. <laughs> yep. Now you know why. It's a it's a it's a picture from the Wikipedia for them. <laughs> They're 240 to 300 pounds, by the way. Oh, dense boys. They are dense boys. They are. I dense. mean, if I was six four, that'd probably that track. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. The uh, that's actually believable because I'm I'm I'm. Six one, and I've I've been two twenty uh, before two twenty five. I've hit before, so I imagine a couple extra inches. Um, the leak from Bali. This is apparently a flying head with attached entrails, such as a heart, lungs, intestines, etc. And apparently, the leak are humans who practice cannibalism and black magic, uh, who also oh. tend to haunt graveyards and feed on the corpses of the deceased outside of their animal forms. They're said to appear as humans with abnormally long tongues and large fangs. That also, that actually reminds me of something from Malfo. Um, yeah. It's a resurrectionist unit. Uh, it has, it's basically... Um, the Google Foo is furious. Oh, uh, what are you called? What are you called? You see, the problem is, <laughs> unfortunately... Uh, Malfo is less popular than I would like it to be. Yeah. <laughs> so it's very <laughs> difficult to find certain things, like, super quick. Yeah. Um, which, if you don't know what Malfo is, it's a uh, a war game in which it's basically a hodgepodge of different aesthetics. Um, everything from Victorian England to um, Japan. And it's a Yin the Pingolin. That's what I was okay. thinking. Uh, it's the pe it's a pangolin, which okay. I think is a Chinese version of the thing we're talking about. Okay. But I don't know. 
That wouldn't surprise me, um, as all these areas are, are uh, they're very close. They're, they're, you know, the majority of them are, are Asian countries. So I wouldn't be surprised if there was a, a form of that uh, somewhere. It's basically what happens with it is, oh, you know what? Actually, the picture that you have right there yeah. is on the Wikipedia page for this. <laughs> okay. So how about that? Yeah, does not surprise me. Um, also, sometimes the Balinese... Uh, may attribute certain illnesses to the leak. The next creature, these are all... Well, actually, here's similar. the thing. Yeah. A leak... Yes. ...may actually cause illnesses, because if you don't take care of a leak, there might be some uh, bacteria that gets into your house. You never know. You never know. Might might It also might cause black mold. It could that, cause black mold. That's not good. This is leak, by the way, spelled L-E-Y-A-K. Yeah, I know, but I'm I'm okay. pre- pretending the Y is silent. Okay, gotcha. Mm-hmm. Cause it is. <laughs> yeah. Next is the Krausu. In Thailand, this creature manifests itself as the head of a woman, also with her internal organs hanging about. Um, and these are nocturnal creatures that are said to glow or are followed by a will o' wisp. And mm. the Krausu is under a curse. That makes it forever hungry. It's so a hungry cons- ghost. A hunger ghost, yeah. The Krausu is uh, forever hungry, and she will consume the blood of animals in the night. And if none are found, she will also eat feces and rotted flesh, and then wipe its mouth on your clothes that it finds hanging on a clothesline. And this is why you should never hang your clothes to dry at night. That sounds like it was created by a particularly ambitious e- HOA. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, I hate HOAs. I I have you. a HOA, and I'm not allowed to keep my garbage cans on the side of my house anymore. And it's making me so angry. You could put up a small fence, like a like a garbage can's wide fence. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm well, because if I had to put up a small fence, then I have to get an architectural review. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to get a fence, put it on rollers that have stakes, and then that way I can just be like, oh, no, it's it's not a part of anything. I'm going to pick it up and roll is away. That, is that from the HOA, though, about the architecture review? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because as long as something doesn't touch the outer walls or the structure of a house, you don't need a, it to be reviewed by an architect. You could just yeah. sort of go for it. Um, and even if it does touch those, this is just New York – stuff from like 10 years ago so it might not still be accurate even if it does um you don't need an architect you just need to have an architect or engineer stamp it so you just have to review it and stamp you don't actually have to pay an architect to come up with plans you can have just a designer do it and then pass it off and have someone stamp it and you're you're solid (laughs) uh that got serious yeah (laughs) yeah 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 uh so, not changing topics at all, the Krausu also preys on pregnant women in their homes just before or after childbirth. It hovers around the house of a pregnant woman, um, uttering sharp cries to instill fear. It uses the elongated proboscis-like tongue to reach the fetus or the pl- placenta within the womb. Uh, uh yeah. Okay. <laughs> this habit among other unmentionable things that the spirit does, is believed to cause uh, many diseases that affect women, mainly in rural areas, during their pregnancy. In some cases, um, it may catch the unborn child and use its sharp teeth to devour it. Uh, mm. in, order to protect, <laughs> in order to protect the pregnant woman uh, from becoming victims uh, before delivery, their relatives often place thorny branches around the house, um, and this improvised thorny fence discourages the Krausu from coming to suck the blood and causing other suffering to the pregnant lady within the house. So here's the question. Yes. If you wear thorny underwear, yes. does that work? Like would, if they wore the it's like not recommended? But then they wouldn't have to make a fence for like all the the bits yeah, it's, around the house. I, I'd say it's probably more effective. On account that a thorny fence may or may... Because it's a flying head, so does it have... This is uh, presupposing that there's a maximum height that it could fly. Um, mm. So thorny underwear is probably more 
uh, effective, and then it doesn't matter how tall it can fly because the uh, the goal is uh, protected. <laughs> oh boy, you've just called. All right, well let's continue. I trying to keep it family friendly. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's family friendly. All right, we we talked about. Uh, I, I talked about grabbing my pants on a train. <laughs> <laughs> We're really family friendly. We're a really family friendly joint. Here. Oh, yeah. Uh, after delivery, the woman's relatives must take uh, and cut the placenta far away for burial to hide it from the Krausu. And there is the belief that the placenta is buried deep enough that the spirit cannot find it. So you got to hide it. You got to be sneaky. Mm-hmm. You got to take it far away. Uh, however, the Krausu must reattach itself to its formerly headless body before the day comes. For if not, the body is destroyed, um, and this will cause the creature to die in terrible pain. Uh, during the day, it will appear as a normal person, uh, but it may also be defeated by uh, cutting off its hanging guts and hiding them. So if you see it, cut the guts, hide them. I mean, cutting the guts of anything usually kills it. You know that's not wrong. Yeah. That's 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 pretty. I didn't think about that when I wrote that. Uh, that general. That's just generally true. That's just a generally true statement. Yeah, I, I would say. Yeah. In general, uh, cutting the guts does kill something. The next creature on the list is the penangolin, and uh, well, that was actually what I was thinking of. Was it? Oh, yeah. yes. Yes, from from like. Right earlier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's what I was thinking of because there's Yin the Penangolin yeah. um, in Malfo, yeah. which is a Ten Thunders um, unit. Okay. It's also uh. extremely similar to the previous two things we were just talking about. Yeah, that's why these are all sort of clustered together because they're essentially regionalisms of the same creature. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> you know, I, I always kind of wanted that figure because I thought it would be fun to paint the guts. Yeah. I'm not a Ten Thunders player. I'm a Resurrectionist, but... Yeah. I, I say I'm a Resurrectionist, but I've never played a game, so... <laughs> <laughs> Take it or leave it. The uh, the Penangolin, while the description is identical to the other two creatures, is uh, its mythological origins are different. And this is a very beautiful woman who obtained her appearance through the practice of black magic and deals with the devil. Hmm. Mm. I mean, really, uh, nothing bad ever comes from a deal with the devil. Not ever. You can get real good at playing guitar, mm-hmm. and then you have a, uh, a guitar battle with Steve Vai uh, in a blues movie. I- I'm hearing nothing bad. Only if you're Ralph Macchio. Mm, that's true. You do have to be the Machio. You do have to be the Machio. Also, if that sounds crazy, it's a real movie called Crossroads, and it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen it. It's so good. One story <sighs> tells of a midwife who made a deal with the devil. One stipulation uh, in the contract was that she must not eat meat for like 40 days, and upon breaking this rule, she was cursed. Uh, <laughs> something interesting about this tale, however, is that she must soak her intestines in a vat of vinegar in order to shrink them back to normal size to attach her head to the body. And That's that awful. Sounds terrible. And uh, accounts for some uh, less frequent uh, um, descriptions of them s- smelling, smelling vinegar before you uh, see them because they just have to keep dipping themselves in vinegar all the time. Mm. Which might explain that individual when i got back into magic the gathering uh who just drank apple cider vinegar all the time so he's a he's a a, a pangolin he is a pangolin Mm, Uh, i mean he wasn't a beautiful woman (laughs) he was probably the farthest thing from a beautiful woman so that's that's very true uh a different story tells of a woman taking a bath and a man whose intent was not described enters the room and startles her She's so startled that she whips her head around so quickly that it flies off of her body 
in a fit of rage, and she flies her dismembered head at him and kills him. So yeah, he kind of he got what he had coming. He got what he had coming. That's also got to be the most pissed anyone's ever gotten to just whip their heads around like that. Yeah, I mean that's not usually how I react when I get angry. Usually, what I do is I just stuff it down. That's I find that's probably that works best. Yeah, just like make a big ball of anger and just stuff it deep inside and then lock it away. I mean, solid. that's what happens with me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's not like I'm one of the reasons why I go to therapy every week, but nah. you know, whatever. <laughs> as far as the witchcraft aspect, uh, this is where we enter the world the ma- of the, the man Kukulam. Uh, the name literally translates into the practitioner of Kulam. Um, and it's a form of black magic. And they will cast spells and curses or use voodoo dolls uh, and practice necromancy. Uh, it's said that the only way to lift a curse of the Mankukalam is to find them and bribe them to lift the curse they placed in the first place. Ah, so basically it's like a racket. It's Yes, exactly. It is a racket. Hmm, okay, mm. so I, I understand this. This is, this is something I'm familiar with. This is just your standard operating procedure super mm-hmm. vanilla yeah nothing yeah. i i'm hearing nothing bizarre in this no none at all none at all uh the, this one by the way this upcoming one is the one that i was familiar with getting into it and what i thought that all of this was to begin with i just thought when you it, it oswang and pride i thought they were the same thing turns out they're not um hmm. This is actually nice because I, I learned I learned something, uh, which I like. They, they, I like this kind of why we do this in the first place. We like learning about just uh, folklore and monsters and stuff like that, and a lot of stuff that we were unaware of prior. Uh, this so, is there's some nightmare pictures of this. There are some nightmare pictures. So the preta is what the image up top is, and uh, this is really what I feel the offswung is. And these are monsters uh, that are said to be pitied. Rather than feared, they're invisible. Although, uh, if you're in an altered state, you may see one. They are human-like, with sunken eyes, mummified skin, and distended stomachs. They... Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. So, if you're in an altered state, you might see them. Yes. Nothing sounds weird about that statement at all to me. Continue. Okay. Um. Oh, also. Not a tangent, half a tangent, definitely a tangent. I was listening to a podcast, and they uh, touched on the Holder folk because they were in um, mm-hmm. Iceland, and they, of course, started talking about the Holder folk. And uh, this individual said that his feeling was that the Icelanders uh, are over it. They're sort of just like, just <laughs> over it. They're like, just stop, just stop asking about it. And when he asked the taxi driver... He said that his uh, his feeling was that a lot of the ideas of Holder Folk came from writers who were on mushrooms and that people didn't believe it. And then they took mushrooms and then they saw the Holder Folk and then, oh, shit, I'm wrong. They're real. And then they wrote about it. So it's this sort of <laughs> self-perpetuating mushroom trip. Well, listen, you just got to take the mushrooms. Why? Just take the mushrooms. Then you'll see them. It's, <laughs> it's the magic that lets you see them. Yeah, it's, it's the magic. They're hidden unless you're on mushrooms, and then oh boy. Uh, so these uh, the preta, they roam the desolate deserts and other places that humans find unfriendly, and they're individuals who were jealous, they were greedy, deceitful, uh, etc. So they're like seven deadly sins type of stuff in the past, and were brought back as the preta based on their karma, and like that's how we're, they they were reincarnated. Hmm. The uh, the primary source for this was a uh, in depth commentary on the paper uh, that Mendez had originally wrote and said how it devalues the culture <laughs> from where <laughs> these legends came. John, John, I think is, I found a preta. That is not a preta. That's fantastic. Oh, I think that's boy. a preta uh, because <laughs> that is that, you, that creature ate oh, a. That creature creature ate about a to- uh, ate a, to- a toddler, I'd say, oh, no. um, it's... and its its arm is literally the length of its entire body seated. 
and the and the and the infant is like a full grown toddler whose legs enter the mother's legs. If mm-hmm. you're paying two dollars a month or more, you could see what John just pasted in the middle of my copy as I was reading it. <laughs> well, it looks like a preda. It does. You're not wrong. You're and it just wrong. ate a child. Mm-hmm. That's that's yeah. what I'm saying. Not is wrong. it? Even though I wasn't searching for Preda when I saw that, uh, <laughs> and I just was clicking between tabs, you know, yeah. whatever. That uh, also, uh, based on reading the text contained within that picture, that is not three weeks. And that is not how arms or eyes work. Uh, uh, that's 30 weeks. Oh, 30 weeks. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah let me just zoom that out a little bit. <laughs> oh, cra- oh, thanks so much. <laughs> I can make it. I can make it even bigger if you like. See, there's there. It's a little bigger now. You can Great. see the uh, the eyes are getting more and more soulless as it gets bigger. Yeah. Um. I think <laughs> it's trying. Oh, yep, yep. It's stolen my soul. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, great, great. I don't hate that at all. <laughs> I'm gonna send you that like. Once a week now. Just at two in the morning. Just mm-hmm. I want to see that show up in my inbox. I'm gonna I'm gonna get uh different phone numbers that just hit your phone. It'll oh, be worth better. it. Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah. better. Uh so Jordan writes <laughs> uh on Mendez's paper, again the paper from nineteen ninety one that sort of created all this weirdness about the Preda. Mm-hmm. He writes that I need to state that it is without question that the Spanish wanted to eradicate indigenous people and the tribal religions of the Philippines. I also believe that they had a vested interest in stripping power from the Babylon and the uh, Catalan, uh, Calo- Catalan, um, which were like powerful figures in, in uh, old Philippine. Um, uh, 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 what's the word for like a group of people that are all together in like follow rule, like towns and shit. A community? Yeah, communities. That There we go. It's... Uh, culture? <laughs> yeah, culture. Um, That's the word. Society? <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> there's there's like a hundred words to describe what you just said. Yeah. Uh, they did this using sometimes brutal and humiliating tactics, um, which I won't subscribe to, uh, is that they used the Aswang to achieve this, right? So Men- Menendez essentially attributed their own the uh the folklore of the indigenous people to the spanish trying to eradicate those same indigenous people so kind okay. of like so this so whole paper that he wrote was about this and a criticism of her paper um and he writes that he is coming on the fact that um the menendez article and subsequently all so, uh sources citing it place the explicit origin of the Aswang on the Spanish and not like cultural and just the Spanish being bad people to begin with. Um, I mean, in general, uh, imperialism is typically bad. Yeah. I will say in general. Yeah. Yeah. Colonization is not great, Mm -hmm. especially when there's uh, people who lived there before them. Yeah. Yeah. That's the most important thing. Yeah. And Jordan continues basically with exactly what we just said is that in its most simplistic form, the theory suggests that the traits of the Aswang documented by folklorists and anthropologists are actually inversions created by the Spanish to subvert the powers and influence of the Batalon and uh, other shamans from the Philippines, and that the Aswang is known for its propensity towards human fetuses, internal organs, and bodily discharges. Uh, The mirror of this is that the Babylon is known as a midwife and healer. Uh, other inversions are of the offensive odor of the Aswang versus the possibly pleasant herbal odors of the Babylon. And it is theorized that the Spanish attached invented Aswang folklore to disenfranchise the most powerful woman of the Philippines. Uh, I- I'm not going to lie. Uh, that doesn't sound like it's impossible. It doesn't. Yeah. That so, sounds that sounds uh almost reasonable. Yeah, but jo- so Jordan's um he's commenting that um these ideas um were existed within that culture prior to okay. the Spanish and that 
um, this one individual wrote a paper that for some reason exploded into popularity and said that the Spanish invented them, essentially stealing the culture from the people themselves. Um, so, so that's his main takeaway is that this one paper got popular and then it just happens to be the one paper that con- got continually sourced by mm-hmm. all the other folklore. So he's trying to say like, Hey, this stuff was around before and you're sort of, uh, diminishing the value of the culture itself by by uh, addressing it in the way that the uh, the Menendez paper uh, spoke about it. Um, That's fair. Yep. Uh, so he continues saying that I can't stress how important it is to stop blaming the Spanish for the invention of the Aswang, uh, and that this thinking not only dev- devalues and discredits a very important cultural phenomenon. But it sends people down an inconsistent and demoralizing path uh, while exploring Philippine mythology. And that the uh, demonization theory discourages the study and understanding of the uh, evolved indigenous beliefs that continue to uh, persevere both rural and urban communities. And that the Aswang is a unifying aspect of Philippine cult- uh, culture, uh, but instead has been used to divide the educated from the ignorant. And that this is one of the main great cultural tragedies of philippine modernism um which was a, a, a mouthful but like so this is at the end of a very long paper so at this point he's got to try to like drive that like that's why it's being written that firmly like that so he's got to okay. sum up the entirety of that paper and just sort of like drive the point home um because beforehand he, he was sort of summarizing different points of uh uh the aswang uh at the beginning that being said, it turns out that once again, Destination Truth has beat me to the punch. And I always well, yeah. find it that after doing some research, that uh, it's really interesting to see what's being shown on TV and what um, people, what most people will be uh, seeing when they're first introduced to this. Um, now, now, knowing that the Aswang is a class of creature that contains many subclasses, it was interesting to see how their description of it uh, was of one specific, like they described it as one specific creature that had the features of not only all the ones I described, but many others. And that photo, by the way, in, in, in the write up, that's the picture of the Aswang that Destination Truth used, which some would say, um, hmm. not similar at all to any of the uh, stuff that we had. Yeah, no, not really. So what you're telling me is. They've created a. Uh, they co- they turned they, into a Bigfoot. They turned they, they, into a Bigfoot. Well, did they create an Elvis? So is this like a like a seeing Elvis in the in the gas station type situation where there's only one, and he's he's not actually dead, but he's there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think I do think that Elvis is a cryptid, and we might have to do an episode on Elvis. We should do an Elvis episode. That would be Elv- fantastic. Elvis the Cryptid. Elvis the Cryptid. I mean, it will have a lot of Weekly World News articles. In it. Yeah. That's I think all that'd I'm going to say. Fantastic. Um, I will say that it may have been pronounced Aswing several times. Amazing. Which, yeah, right off the bat. Yes. Great. Fantastic. Yes. I yes. love it. Yes. More. Uh, <laughs> yeah. More. So they set up near a church uh, with their, quote, audio recording equipment which i i assume is the most wordy way to say microphones yeah and, that's kind of weird yeah it's super weird trying to they try to make just mics sound super scientific uh, i mean let's just let's be real uh they are in fact super scientific yeah they're super scientific setting up mics to catch the ass wing and then they eat uh balut which for the uninitiated is an egg with a baby chicken side. Uh, they then mm. spend the night listening to some menacing frogs and attempting to find said menacing frogs. Mm-hmm. They, yes, yes. Yes. They that's, examine... That's, yeah. that's, that's pretty much... It's the so worst kind of frog. They were looking for, for uh, frogmen. Yeah, they're looking for frogmen. They examine their thermal camera and find a rather conspicuous cow. They then... Mm. Mm. I mean, that looks like a deer to me. It does, until they turn off the thermal camera, and it's just clearly a cow. 
<laughs> like the whole point of of the the thermal camera to begin with is to make things you can see anyway look spookier and weird in the yeah. types of show. Because like it's not like they have a full crew with like great lighting, and it's also not that dark to begin with. Yeah. Mm. Right, because okay. all of the footage of them running around in the woods scared isn't even like half the time night vision. It's just them running. <laughs> like, and then they enter the church and hear some banging, uh, like knocking on wood type of banging, not the alternate version. Uh, I find hey, it interesting. From what I've heard, the ass wing gets around. The ass, the ass wing does get around. Uh, so I, who knows? Yeah, I find it interesting that. Although they had not been given any information on the ass wing, uh, at least so far in the episode, there's not really any research that was done. Everything they described in the first few paragraphs in Wikipedia ends up being how they f- find the ass wing or describe it in the television show. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. That's uh, interesting. They describe a tick tick sound. Which is literally in the first paragraph of Wikipedia, as well as other sounds described in the article. They also begin um, showing great anxiety upon, up, but oh god, upon seeing a cat again. It's the normal words I can't say. Yeah, yeah, it's but real bad. It's real bad. They just see a cat and get scared, basically, because like oh shapeshifter, it's a cat, it's the ass wing. Um, they leave the church. They re-entered the church, and one investigator uh, says that there is a woman and a man here. Although, at no point uh, mm. is anyone outside of the team shown or heard. So she, they just but, say it. The microphones but, don't see it. The thermal camera doesn't see it. They just submit that with no thing, just nothing to support it at all. But if if it's a church, it's not weird for there to be a woman and a man there. It wouldn't be weird, I would assume, that they, prior like, to showing up, reached out to, like, the local community and said, hey, we're going to be shooting around here, just as a heads up. You know, just the same way every other television crew, like, does that. <laughs> like, like for, for example, when they're shooting around here, weeks ahead of time, like, they were posting everywhere, hey, we're filming here, hey, we're filming here, like, you know, we're going to be closing this road and that road and all that. That... Everyone was yeah. probably aware. They, it was just them in the area, and they just said, for no reason, there's a woman and a man. Um, they also get extremely – and ex- hang on, let me figure. This should be all caps, This where it wrote extremely – imagine wrote that in all caps. Extremely scared of a dog um, shown in this photo just to the right, which I'm pretty sure uh, a mighty squirrel could have fended off uh, – but well, hey, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Small dogs are vicious. <laughs> Small they got dogs that, are pretty vicious. They got that. Uh, they got that Napoleon complex or something. They do. They do. Yeah. <laughs> like again, if you're two dollars a month or more, I encourage you just open this, find the picture John surprised me with, and look at this picture. I wrote dog on it so you could tell where the dog is because you could possibly mistake it as like. A menacing marshmallow. Yeah, I mean, it kind of reminds me of that card fight Vanguard card. Yes, you know, like the poofy dog, best doggo ever. Yeah, I it's know like exactly a pink. Exactly what you're talking it's about. It's a pink poofy dog with like a jetpack on. Yeah, jetpack like, dog is best card in card fight Vanguard. I really, oh. honestly, don't remember what I it was called, don't and I what it was. I got rid of most of my card fight Vanguard cards recently. Oh, found it. What was it called? Uh, Toy Poogle. Toy Poogle. Okay. Best card fight Vanguard card that there ever was. Um, in the episode, by the way, they see the dog and they say in a very scared voice, what's it doing there? And it's mad dogging us. What? What is that? What? <laughs> yeah, and they also and also, oh, and what was that? Oh my god, I'm gone! And then uh, one starts crying. Um, again, the dog looks like a Bichon. But wh- John, they start. <sighs> you see the picture? I linked to that video. I should have recorded that sound, put in here. I didn't, but I should have, and I'm. 
to be fair, not going to. If you want, just I link to the video. Just watch it and skip ahead. <laughs> I just, but why? I don't like. It's literally they're freaking the fuck out over a Bichon, and it's it's pretty good. That's so dumb. Uh, they uh they take an uh, the audio recording of the ticking sent to an LA Zoo expert, and he says that the ticking they found is an insect. Uh, they also find more cats. Yeah, well, I mean, they always... That's... <sighs> <sighs> like... So, I've got a headache already. Right? Yeah, as you should. And, like, well, no, I mean, like, I had a headache before we started doing this. Mm -hmm. And this has just given me a worse headache. As it should, yeah. Like, that... like oh. it's very... It's deeply upsetting. <laughs> I also like the fact that the I, I'm I'm clicking through the Destination Truth video. I like the fact that everything's reversed to prevent uh, copyright hits. Yep, <laughs> which is always good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Toy Fleur is written backwards, and that was one screenshot. Ah, you could always flip it. Yeah, but I didn't work. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, jeez. Well. Oh. Yeah, there's a reason why I didn't do the ass one. Yeah. Yeah, like, literally, like, I, there was not enough to do an episode on it until I found that one paper criticizing another paper. And then I was like, okay, I've got something about it. And clearly it's from a person who's done the research enough to at least criticize another folklorist. So it's like, okay, nice, perfect. Fighting folklorists. It's kind of like fighting futons. Fighting futons was such a good show. I remember watching Fighting Foodons and just getting hungry. It was... Yeah. That's I got very hungry. It. I got very hungry watching that show. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. I'm, I'm... One time in the middle school library yes. that we went to, I took home a book, a cooking book, because I was so hungry. At lunch, like, <laughs> oh, no. Like, I was... <laughs> I was so hungry that oh. I took out a cooking book. <laughs> the uh, when I worked at the farm stand, the uh, mm -hmm. librarian from the college would come in uh, pretty frequently just because of proximity. And he'd get food and he'd he'd always make library jokes and it was fantastic. Like he'd come in and be like, "You know, I'm getting into wrestling, right?" And I'm like, "No, I I didn't know that." And he'd go, "Yeah," he goes, "I'm I'm the Dewey Decimator." And then just pay and leave. <laughs> like, it's pretty fantastic. Oh, I feel sick. That just yeah. makes me feel sad. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> like, it was always a joy to go to the library when you knew the Dewey Decimator was there waiting for you. <laughs> it reminds me of uh, Conan the Librarian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> from uh, UHF. Uh huh. Very good bit. Uh, I think it was basically someone asks um, Weird Al's character, who is Conan, the librarian, yeah, uh, where a book is, and <laughs> he's like, he picks the dude up and like uh -huh. really, really sternly looks the dude in the face, and he's like, "Don't you know the Dewey Decimal System?" <laughs> in like a. Uh, a uh, Arnold parody. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, w I would have never guessed based on that accent that it was an Arnold parody. <laughs> I've I added it to your sources. Oh, fantastic. Great. Thank you. I'm sure mm -hmm. everyone appreciates it. <laughs> it's very important. He cuts a man in half. Oh, wait. It is not Weird Al. I thought it was Weird Al, but it's like some other guy. Yeah. UHF is a super underrated movie. Yeah. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I there's so many good bits in that movie. Badgers, I like that one. Oh, you know that that I like the Rambo so, one. So I know that's based off a real movie. Well, so the Badgers thing we've already touched on. Yeah. This is the second episode we've talked about UHF. Probably won't be the last either. It's definitely not gonna be the last. <laughs> I can guarantee that. Um in it, like like for one, the Badgers guy, the movie was dedicated to him because he got hit by a hit and run situation. Yeah, all that stuff. 
Um, but also the uh, the Rambo scene's just gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's it's, it's the best part of cinema. <sighs> yeah, have gotten an award. Yeah, well. I'm pretty sure Orion, the studio that made UHF, folded yeah. after they made UHF. <laughs> like, I think Orion was literally the last film that uh, they made. Uh, UHF was the last film that Orion made. Damn. Orion Pictures. Let me see. Uh, bankruptcy, 1991 to 1995. Um, notable films. Orion Library Today. Yada, yada, yada. Their highest grossing film was Dances with Wolves, by the way. Ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that was the same studio. Yeah. They also made um, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Nice. Third one is in the works. I That's so wild to me. Right? Yeah. Bill and Ted Face the Music, August 21st, 2020. Wow. Right? right. That's surprising. Think, think about how crazy Keanu's freaking life has to be. He's coming off the back of John Wick 3 to do Bill and Ted 3. I mean, that sounds good, though. Right? Like, it, it looks... I, I'm gonna like it. Or I'm gonna hate it. Or I'm I not don't gonna care. care. Either way, yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna accept it. Yeah. The Grim Reaper's coming back, by the way. Is it? That's gonna be good. Yeah, William Sadler... Sadler is the Grim Reaper in that? Yeah. Oh, that's going to be good. Anywho, um, <laughs> I've drugged this episode out long enough with my talking about movies. <laughs> uh, as always, if you're interested in the podcast, we have a website, cryptopediacast.com. On Instagram and Twitter, we're at cryptopediacast. Oh, if you want to email boy. us, it's us we at cryptopediacast.com. So I don't know if John's We have a Patreon. Oh, nice. Okay. What was that? Oh, you fro your screen froze for a little bit. <laughs> well, I was recording. I was saying stuff, and then I heard doo -doo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was just talking about the Patreon. Nice. Uh, we have one. We have one. Um, as we, Brandon has mentioned a few times, if you're donating two dollars a month or more, you um you get access to all of these show notes. Um, if you're donating five dollars a month or more. You get access to bonus content, which is like, uh, I just recorded a bunch of, I recorded an SCP episode. Which I um, really like. I, I'm still, I have a second one that I've recorded, yeah, but I, I haven't think, edited. Is is your first SCP out yet? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? I nice. put it up on, I literally uploaded that as soon as you said I like it. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'll upload that. So I liked it. It yeah, good. it's up. It's up on the uh, thing, and I also uh, uploaded the first section of it, which is the first SCP ever written, okay, um, to YouTube on our our YouTube channel, which is also Wikipedia. Um, but if you are a uh, a jackalope, you sometimes get mentioned on the podcast. So yeah. we have two jackalopes now, and I think this is the first time we're mentioning we have two jackalopes. <laughs> Uh, we've got, uh, Clay Sinclair and Clay Sinclair. Marty Von Party, who's Best our name most, ever. it is a pretty good name. It's a pretty great name. It's a, it's a pretty great name who, uh, <laughs> just recently joined the Jackal fold. Yes. Um, we have a Facebook group where we post stuff. It's a warm uh, fold. <laughs> oof. Uh, I feel violently ill all no, of a sudden. Like, like really fluffy blankets. Yeah, uh, okay. I, I don't think that's what you meant. But like okay. if you put your hand under a K after it's been sleeping for a while. Okay, that that's fair. That kind of fold. Don't get okay. gross with it. Okay, well, I... <laughs> uh, if you enjoy the podcast, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. If you're listening to the podcast on Luminary, don't. the app, please don't. Um, <laughs> just don't use the app in general because it's like really screwing over podcasters who make a living off of it we don't make a living off this podcast but people who do will get screwed by it yeah <laughs> uh that's my my uh my bit of evangelism right there yeah um if you have monster requests or stories uh please send them and be sure to send a source <laughs> yeah. 
Because that's our hardest, that's our, our biggest barrier for entry right now. But if you want to even just find, if you find a good source, just like email it and be like, you guys might like this. And even if it's not enough to get a full episode out of, we might bank it until we find like a few and then good sources and bingo, there you go. There's yeah. some that, um, we've had some suggestions from listeners that I wanted to do so bad, but I just couldn't find enough on. Yeah, there's one that I really want to do, but I feel like... Uh, right now, I just don't have the time to do the research on it. Um, so it's just kind of sitting there on my list. It's nice um, to have a list. <laughs> yeah. I, I actually have a couple up in, like, I'm actively working on a few of them. Like, right nice. now I've got one, two, three, four, five, Too six, many. seven, Stop eight, it. nine, Stop it. ten, eleven, twelve. Too many. I've got twelve that I'm actively working on right now, and slowly gathering sources this one has a lot of sources <laughs> it's actually related to last week's episode but that that's we'll we'll see what happens with that um if you got creepypasta or cryptopasta you can send it to me but i think i'm gonna be doing um SUPs, SUPs. as my uh my bread and butter for bonus content now mm -hmm. nice i like those and that's a good well of uh Stuff. There's some really good ones. Um, I used to just read them. Just I just read SCPs, and then there was the SCP game. Yeah, that was weird. I uh, yeah. I disabled the 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 neck snapping one, the one that you blink on. Yeah, yeah, because I didn't I didn't like that one. I didn't appreciate <laughs> its behavior. Yeah, it's very rude. <laughs> Hunting me down. Yeah. <sighs> uh, if you'd like, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands my website is boyerb.com my email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com that's brandon spelled b-r-a-n-d-o-n not e-n or a-n or any other form of blasphemy and my twitter is at crypto brandon uh on instagram i'm mu 2057 on twitter i'm jf dunham uh my website is john dunham and my email is john at cryptopediacast.com our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. Things got weird. <laughs> Yeah, that was a weird one. That's a weird one. That was a weird one. I'm not going to lie. That was a weird episode. Yeah.